Good morning on this first Sunday after Easter. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace, from God our Father, and from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The Word of God I have for you today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, and I'm going to read from verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger, and see my hands. And reach here your hand, and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we open the Scriptures today, we open our hearts to you. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us your word and that your word is truth, your word is complete, your word contains everything that we need. We ask your blessing over our consideration of your word today. May it strengthen our faith, we ask in Jesus' holy and precious name, giving you the glory, honour and praise now and forever. Amen. My beloved friends, if I were to mention the name of a famous person uh, to you and ask you to write down a few thoughts, the first things that came into your mind, I think it would be really interesting to see what we all came up with. I think some of us might have exactly the same words and some might write something a little bit different. For example, if I mention the name Elvis Presley, what springs to mind? For me, the first thing that springs to mind is his incredible voice and some of the songs that he sang. If I mention Mozart to you, I start thinking of classical music. What about Moses? First thing that comes to my mind is an image of him standing with the Ten Commandments written on stone, or maybe the crossing of the Red Sea over dry land. We think about Jesus' disciples, and I mention the name Judas. I think if not all, then most of us would write traitor, the one who betrayed Jesus. Well, what about Simon Peter? Oh, fisherman, boisterous. We may think about some of the other disciples, and some of them you might not know too much about. But what about if I mention the name Thomas or Tom? Most of us would say doubter. We've even got a phrase that we use, doubting Tom, and that's where it comes from. This comes from the story that we just heard in the scriptures, where Jesus, on Easter Sunday, on the evening, he appeared to the disciples in the upper room where they had had the Passover. And they were behind locked doors and suddenly Jesus was in their midst and uh, for some reason Thomas wasn't there. But Jesus spent some time with his disciples and then he disappeared again. And Thomas, when he came back, found that the disciples were very excited. And they were going, Tom, Tom, we've seen the Lord. It's true what the, what the women said. He's risen. He's alive. The grave is truly empty and it's not because someone stole his body, it's because he's risen. He was right here. He stood among us and he ate some fish and, and talked to us. And Tom, or Thomas, has his doubts. So when the other disciples were saying to him, we have seen the Lord, he said to them, unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails and put my finger into the place of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And so for eight days, Thomas is now confined to being miserable. But after eight days, his disciples are together again, and Jesus again appears in their midst behind the locked doors and says, Peace be with you. Then he looks straight at Thomas, looks him in the eye, looks through his eyes into his soul, 
And he says to him, Reach here your finger, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. Thomas has got the moniker Doubting Tom because he said, unless I see evidence, unless I see it with these two eyes, I'm not going to believe. And so that's what we normally associate with him. But it's really interesting that there's a number of things here and there's one that most people skip over and I've got to admit that I, up until recently I skipped over this as well and didn't really take too much notice of it. And that is that Tom, well, Thomas is the first one to make the confession, my Lord and my God, my God. Peter had said, made a great confession when Jesus said, who am I? He said, you are the son of God. And the disciples had called him Lord many times. But Thomas is the first one to acknowledge and say, my Lord and my God. That Jesus is more than the son of God, he is God. Even though Thomas had his doubts at the beginning, once he saw Jesus and had those doubts driven away, he makes this bold and wonderful confession, my Lord and my God. And we know that he never departed from that. He went on to become a mighty force in the early church and he was, he was um, eventually martyred for his faith. He didn't waver anymore. And even though Jesus said, because you saw, you believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Jesus did everything in order to allay Tom's doubts and fears. Jesus knew that he was a person who was very serious, who thought deeply. And he knew that his mind was asking for evidence, for proof. Thomas had a hard week. The other disciples were elated. They were joyful. They had said to him, Tom, Tom, we've seen the Lord. When he had left them, they were all in despair. They were miserable. What are we going to do? Jesus is dead. And now these, these, these women are saying that he's risen from the dead, that they've seen things. They must be hallucinating. They were all in a mess. But now Thomas comes to them and they're completely different. They're they're full of peace, they're full of joy, they're happy, and he's going, what's going on? Tom, Tom, he was here. We saw him. He's alive. He, he, he was here amongst us. He spent time with us. We saw him. The poor old Thomas, he doubts. He doubts. Unless I see with my own hands and eyes, I won't believe. Well, Jesus made him wait a week. But on the eighth day, Jesus appeared and allayed his doubts and said, Do not be unbelieving, but believing. My Lord and my God. Do you know that doubts are, are normal? That we all experience them? I know there's some Christians who try to say, Well, I never doubt. Well, I, I, I don't really don't believe that. I have my doubts. I have times when I have to battle the doubts, especially in difficult times and you start to wonder, is God really, really there? The devil comes alongside and starts whispering things into your ear and you start to wrestle with these doubts. And that's why we need to be strong in our faith. We need to build up our faith so we can get to that point where we, we believe even though we cannot see. And there's a great story, a great event in Mark's Gospel that always blesses me when I think about this. And we read, we pick it up in Mark chapter 9, and verse 17. And one of the crowd answered him, Teacher, I bought you my son possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and stiffens out. I told your disciples to cast it out and they, they couldn't do it. And he answered them and said, O unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? 
How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. They brought the boy to him. When he saw him immediately, the spirit threw him into a convulsion and falling to the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. It has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You deaf and mute spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. After crying out and throwing him into terrible convulsions, it came out and the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him up, and he got up. When he came into the house, his disciples began questioning him privately, Why could we not drive it out? And he said to them, This kind can only come out, cannot come out by anything but prayer. A very, very interesting happening in the life of Jesus and his disciples. But what I really want to home in on is when Jesus said, All things are possible to him who believes. And the father's response, I do believe, help my unbelief. What an honest, honest answer. What an honest confession. I do believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. Help me overcome those niggling doubts. I'm not surprised that the father had his doubts. This was a, a terrible demon. All demons are terrible, but this one was treating the boy extremely badly. He's having convulsions, foaming in the mouth, getting going stiff, being thrown into water, being thrown into fire. Um, it's scary. The man in desperation asked Jesus' disciples, and he, he knew that they could cast out demons, had done it before, to help him, and they couldn't even help. This, this demon was so terrible. I believe. I believe you, Jesus, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, there's, there's just a few doubts. I believe. Help my unbelief. You see, he put his trust not in himself, but his trust in Jesus to give him the faith necessary. And Jesus did. And the boy was delivered from demon possession. I believe. Help my unbelief. Jesus helped Thomas. Thomas had his doubts. Unless I see, unless I can touch and feel, I'm not going to believe. Well, Jesus had a mission for Thomas. He had work to do. He needed him to be strong in faith. And so he appeared to him. And you know, the same thing is happening today. I keep hearing testimonies of many, many people in Muslim countries who cry out to Jesus if you're real. If it's true what we've heard about you, show yourself. And he does. And they believe. You see, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. He wants us to believe. And he will do everything to make it possible for us to believe. I believe, help my unbelief. When you start to feel doubt and fear attacking you, drive it away. Drive it away with the word of God. Jesus said about this demon, this type only comes out by prayer. And some translation says by prayer and fasting. The tools we have to help us grow in our faith, the word of God, prayer, fasting, walking with him, spending time with him, growing into spiritual maturity that we're not phased. I take a very simple approach to life. I take a very simple approach to this book. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. I don't need to know all the answers. I don't need to know... Why? I believe. 
But I have to say to God and be honest, I believe. Help my unbelief. And he does. You see, God is gracious and merciful and kind, full of compassion. He wants us. He loves us. He's our Father. He wants us close to him. He wants us to live as more than conquerors. So the simple thing we can do is just to offer ourselves to him, fully place our trust in him. I believe. Help my unbelief. May God bless you. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord, that you are grace, mercy, peace, kindness, compassion. You're patient. When we ask for your help, you give it to us. When doubts assail us, you are there to comfort and strengthen us. Lord, we do believe, but help our unbelief. May our confession be that of Thomas, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God, you are everything. You are everything we need. Help us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, knowing that everything else will be added unto us. Help us to walk in your truth and in your ways today and always. We pray for your church. We pray that you would strengthen her, cleanse her, renew her, begin with us. Take away all the rubbish. Take away, Lord, all the false teaching, the false prophets. And give us true people who stand up and proclaim your word without fear or favor. Thank you for your word. Thank you that your word cannot be broken. Thank you that therein is our security in our life. Lord God, we surrender all to you. We ask that you take us by the hand, lead us and guide us. We lift up before you today our nation and our governments, and we pray, Lord, for, for wisdom. We pray that you would help them to be faithful and honest. We pray for those who live under tyranny. We pray for those who are suffering in the wars in the Ukraine and in Israel and Palestine, other places of the world. We pray for those, Lord, who live in fear of being invaded. We pray that you would thwart the plans of the enemy and all evil. Father God, we lift up before you those who are suffering, and there's so much suffering in this world. We pray, Lord, for your mercy. We pray, Lord, for your mercy upon those who do not know you yet. And we ask that many would cry out to you and be saved. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we lift up before you the sick, the dying, the poor, the homeless, the helpless. Father, I lift up before you all who listen to this message, and I thank you for them. And I pray that you would let us lay your hands upon them and strengthen them and comfort them and increase their faith. Lord, there's so much we want to say, but the main thing is we thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your blood upon the cross. And we confess, my Lord and my God. And now we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. God be with you till we meet again.